Hey everyone, Dr. Baron Grutter here. Um, I was going to make a quick video just talking about uh, how to virtually extract some teeth that are a little more difficult. I've shown uh, ways how to do it uh, that are the more uh, traditional means. Uh, just select a tooth, hit F to uh, erase and uh, uh, delete and fill, erase and fill, sorry, and then um, you know, mess with the slider bars. So we'll do that again, but I'm going to show you kind of when you have a tooth that gets a little more complicated when they have uh, you know, dark triangles, if you will, um, spaces like that. So I'm going to show you how, and also when you have these deep recession areas, it gets a little more complex. So, um, and this is a case that uh, I am doing uh, upper, lower, uh, all on six, upper, upper, all on four, lower. And so I've already extracted teeth uh, on the top, and I am now going to extract in the lower. And click a little thing I like to do is I actually extract the guide tubes with the um, uh, with the model and that way I can sort of see where um, I need to extract so um, so for instance I'm going to be extracting these lower canines and I'll re-import this into the software and then tweak where those positions really need to be but um, yeah so anyway here we go so I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this stuff off. I'm going to focus on getting these canines gone and this second premolar here. So anyway, I'm, I hit S to select the same thing as clicking up here and I'm going to mess with the, the brush size. Uh, it, the problem is if you have it too big, big is nice because you can select a lot but you get a lot of bleed over Then you have to come back, hold shift and deselect and it just gets tedious. So instead I like to use my bracket buttons to make it a little smaller and uh, make it about the size of the most apical aspects. Now, we don't have to be perfect here. Um, just going to... Now, one thing is I used to always select the entire tooth. Um, I'm not worried about selecting the entire tooth, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. I'm not... Basically, the, the cuss tip or the incisal edge or the occlusal surface, whatever you want to call it, depending on the tooth, um, I don't necessarily have to select all that, and I'll show you why in a moment. Again, if I get a little bit of bleed over past the margin, it's not a big deal. I do want to have positive air. Uh, it's hard to say if it's positive or negative, but I don't. I, w I want to leave extra tooth surface on the adjacent tooth if possible. I don't want to accidentally remove tooth surface that's not going to be removed. On the case like this, it's not a big deal because if I can't get it to see, I could just take a bird of the tooth. I'm taking the tooth out anyways, but um, I don't. That complicates my life, and I don't really want to have to think about that during surgery. So I need to connect these two areas. So I'm going to zoom in real far, and I'm going to make this selection size even smaller. All right. Let's see if it's it is connected now. All right. I don't I don't want islands of white. I don't mind if there's a big area, but that's fine. Um, don't like this. Hold shift, deselect this to surface. And maybe a little bit there, not a big deal. All right. Now if I hit the B button to smooth my boundary, um, get a nice smooth selected area, hit OK. And now I can just double click right here, and it selects all of that. That's why I mean it. In a case like this, it wouldn't take me too long, but sometimes there's so much to surface. So now when, what we used to do is hit F to race and fill, and it does not like this because there's a dis the just disjointed area here. So instead, I'll just hit delete. So it all goes away, and now I'm just going to go and repair it. Now I do see one little area. This isn't too common, but you can see how it's pink here. It's because it's sort of flipped in outward. So I'm going to actually select that because I don't want to. That could cause me issues. And let's see what all do I. That's the only one I have on. I'm gonna. There's this little piece. I don't like that there. I'm gonna select everything. Hit I to invert the selection. Now the only thing that's highlighted now are these little pieces. And I hit delete. All right. So now there's no little stragglers. Okay. So I got two little uh, cutout areas. I'm gonna go to Analysis Inspector. And this one's pretty simple. I'm gonna make sure that it's on smooth fill and click right here. We don't want to do all of them because I do not want it to fill the base. That's that's a nightmare. It just sits there forever. Now, you could just click here, and then you'll get sort of a wonky little connection here. 
and then you can mess with it, but I think there's a better option. Uh, and it's a tool that I've been using more and more lately. I've u I've shown some videos, and it's going to be the bridge tool. So I'm going to select right here to here. Hit Control B to make a little bridged area there. Enter. And let's see how it looks now. Smooth fill. That looks good. Uh, there's a little flaw here for some reason. Okay. And now let's see how this looks. Okay. So not quite as blobby in here. And what's also nice is now I've got this pretty well segmented. I can go through and I'm going to, I don't like this little piece here. There's, that's not going to be there in the mouth. Smooth it back a little bit. I can even go through and select it. Delete. Now I'm going a little overboard here for this video, but just to kind of show you how um, refined I can be with this. Control B. Okay. Analysis. Inspector. Oop. Smooth fill. There we go. So now we've got decent tra uh, decent emergence or transition. And then lastly, I want to make this more concave uh, so I can f actually see my guide tubes. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit select. I'm going to double click here. I'm going to connect the dots right there. And now I can use that erase and fill button. Hit the F button. And I can scale this back a ways. Okay, so now we can um, change these a little bit to however we want, and how I like to actually inspect it is to look underneath. I'm pretty sure that looks pretty good. I could probably go farther yet, honestly, but let's see how this looks. I'll end up moving this implant a little bit according to this, but... I'm hit enter. Okay, so, and I am picky, so I'll come back here and smooth this just so that any guide I make doesn't have any sort of weird transitions based on that because you're not going to have these sharp edges. Um, and sharp edges in the guide will print a little bit different, a little bit funky. Um, yeah. So, I mean, heck, if it if I end up impinging on tissue, it's tissue. It's just going to push it out of the way. So, anyway, so that's how I would extract this tooth. Um, I won't, um, I guess I'll go ahead and do this one as well, but I won't, uh, I'll probably not talk. I'll just go ahead and do it, and I'll speed up the, the, um, um, I was trying to mark my time, so I'm eight minutes. Okay, I'll try to speed this up for here.